Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 28th October 2017. I am Sagar Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil, gold, and broad market ETFs using technical charts. We will also look at internal analysis and sector industry analysis using graphs, ranking table, and heat maps. Along the way, we may go through some of the trades shared in our community and look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel. I will try to answer them as we go along. That was the last slide of the session. Let's move to live system. Before we start, I would like to ask one question. What do you think about the market's state based on this week's move? Are you willing to buy many stocks now or are you still cautious? You may type your answer in the Q&A panel. And as we go through the objective data analysis, we will arrive at some sort of conclusion based on that data. Are you bullish, bearish, or neutral at this point? Yes, market is clearly at all time high. The question is, is it safe to take long trade now? Let us go through the actual data and find out the answer. You will notice that for trade station, I have updated my computer with the trade station 10 beta release. It still has some issue. It's a beta release from Trade Station. So I'm not releasing any Q Elite update on Trade Station yet. Once it is more stable, I will be happy to provide the update. Yes, Enamul says wait for the market before going long. I agree, and we will find the same conclusion from our study. Let's start with our analysis of US oil. We are using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. For past two weeks or so, we have been mentioning that in the longer term weekly chart, US oil is in uptrend. Last week, it tilted down a little bit in the daily chart and then went up again. Prior to that, we decided not to take any long trade. If anybody was looking at US oil regularly, then one might take a long trade based on one of the two cyan color candles, preferably the second cyan color candle. That would be a go with flow long trade setup. It will be clearer if we change to simple hop on template. Here, when we remove the watermark resistance level, we can see that oil made higher high, tilted down a little bit, and then made a swing low. One might be able to take a long on the first cyan candle itself, if not at least the second cyan colored candle. Stop would be below recent low, which would be around this price level entry price will be here and the target will be at the upper boundary giving us acceptable reward risk ratio 
the trade could be exited with profit within one trading day on Friday itself. As the weekly chart, both in terms of candle shape as well as candle backdrop color are bullish and the daily chart is also strongly bullish, we would not like to exit full position, partial position could be held trying to let profit run. In this way, by waiting patiently for the right setup and keeping an eye on Q sonar, either using Metastock or using TradeStation, you could take a very low risk, high probability long trade in US oil that exited with profit. US oil went up from Hello area, but gold did not. Let us have a look at gold. Gold came to the lower boundary and also the white direction line from where it went up to slightly above value area and now it has come down to the same white direction line. In between there was no valid long trade setup. Let me change to advanced Hopon template so we can look at the watermark level and stretch release signal as well. We can see that there was a bull release signal the first time gold came to the white direction line and on Friday it has displayed the same bull release signal. There is no heavy activity and also the weekly candle backdrop color is still magenta. So there is no standard Q trade setup in gold right now. But looking at the memory support in weekly, as well as the memory support in daily, and the support from the white direction line, it seems it is more likely that gold will go up from here, at least to the memory resistance line. If it breaks out of the memory resistance, comes down and tilts back up, then it will give us a low risk, go with flow, long trade opportunity. Somebody may wait for that. And also if somebody is using real time fine tune chart, then tomorrow using fine tune, one might try to take a long entry using early range breakout technique. The other possibility would be if next week price comes down, comes to the memory support area and goes back up from there. Then using fine tune template, one could take a minuscule risk, long trade, where the risk will be in the five minutes time frame and the profit for a swing trade would be in the daily time frame those usually end up being highly profitable trade with very large reward risk ratio. So you may keep an eye for that. Before going into the broad market ETFs, let us look at the broad market internals. Every week we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index, weekly chart on the left hand side and NYSE composite index weekly chart on the right hand side because this analysis is using broad indices and weekly charts it is to be used only for long term investment decisions not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading in the weekly charts we can see clearly nasdaq and nyse both are in uptrend there is no doubt about that Nasdaq made a new all time high. The candle has a large lower tail, showing that initially Nasdaq came down and then went up during the week. In fact, much of Nasdaq's gains came on Friday. NYSE, on the other hand, could not make new all time high. That is the broad composite index could not make new all time high. In fact, it declined and the traffic light candle color turned yellow. Though it is still stretched or overbought 
as we can see from the dot on top of the candle. Both SPY and QQQ went up. So it is slightly different from that, that NYC composite in fact came down. However, we must say that both NASDAQ and NYC are in strong uptrend on the weekly charts. In terms of internals, they couldn't surpass previous peaks. However, from last couple of weeks, we are discussing that gradually they are strengthening. For this specific week, four of the internals actually came down. However, they are still above zero, considerably above zero, and two of the internals went up. All of them ended above zero. So in summary, we may conclude that the broad markets are clearly in uptrend. The internals continue to be weak, however, strengthening. And for this specific week, the internals are clearly bullish. This seems to show that the market is very strong. And in fact, if we look at the broad market ETFs, we'll arrive at the same conclusion. However, when we look at the sectors and industries, we have a somewhat mixed picture. Let us look at the broad market ETFs first. We are looking at SPY using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. Together we call it at a glance template. We can see that SPY made a new all time high. The weekly candle has a long lower tail, showing that during the week, SPY declined that we can see more clearly from the daily chart. Interestingly, after the bearish headwind signal in daily, it came down for three days. Thursday, it tried to go up, but closed lower than open. And much of SPY's recovery happened on Friday. Friday, it marginally closed above the watermark resistance level. Weekly activity is much higher than two previous weeks, though it is not very high. In daily chart, we see that though Friday market is very bullish, or at least that is what all the newspaper outlets are saying, Friday's activity on SPY was actually reasonably lower than the down day of Wednesday. Wednesday, we had very high activity down day. Friday, it recovered, but still the activity was not as high as Wednesday. However, looking at the price move, we have to conclude that SPY is in very strong uptrend. Another interesting thing to note that the low of Wednesday came precisely to the memory support line and went up from there. We keep discussing this over and over again, that if somebody is keeping an eye on the memory support level, or sometimes at deep watermark support level, that is on the daily chart, then using fine-tuned real-time chart, one may enter a very precise entry in this case, long entry with very high reward risk ratio. That happened again in SPY on Wednesday. There was a bearish headwind earlier from where price declined a little bit to the memory support line. So we have to see if next week price reverses at least to the memory support line again. If that happens, there may be low risk short day trade entry opportunities. There is no swing trade opportunity right now. It is already at upper boundary, so we are not going to take any long trade. 
and it is in clear uptrend so we are not going to take any short trade either we are looking at dia through the same at a glance template from the weekly chart we see that dia also made new all time high it is far above upper boundary in the weekly chart in the daily chart interestingly we see that much of dia's gain happened early in the week not later as was true for spy and very much true for qqq in fact for the last four days of the week dia moved sideways last couple of weeks dia was outperforming the market we can see that for long time the relative performance line was tilting up but for last few days dia is underperforming the market we can see that from the relative performance line tilting down in the daily chart the traffic light candle color has turned yellow there was a bear release signal on wednesday there was heavy activity as well however there was no box trade set up in the short direction because there was no obvious resistance level so at the right edge there is no standard q trade setup either in long or in short direction in dia qqq had one of its best days in recent times on friday prior to friday throughout the week it was actually declining underperforming the market then on friday it opened with a gap up and the gap up open was above the watermark resistance level when that happens it is expected that shorts will start getting stopped out one after another so the weakest shorts will cover in the beginning and that will fuel the up rally further and as it continues more and more shorts need to cover and that is what probably happened on friday the sudden and somewhat surprising very large gap up move in qqq probably stopped out many short holders and that resulted in a very large move in qqq it made a new all time high this is the etf that has extreme high the only one that has extreme high activity in the daily chart on friday prior to that we had heavy activity down day on wednesday and thursday was also down day but friday made up for all of that loss and much more the weekly activity is also much higher than two previous weeks to three previous weeks though it is not very high so qqq is in strong uptrend because it gapped up on friday heavily there was no swing long trade opportunity it is already above upper boundary so we are not going to take any long trade now and it is in strong uptrend so we don't have any chance of taking short swing trade either all these three etfs spy dia and qqq are in uptrend in the daily chart with higher highs and higher lows however iwm russell 2000 etf is not in uptrend let us look at that in the daily chart we see that there is a memory resistance line for iwm that shows us that it has lower high and we can see that it has lower low as well because it has lower highs and lower lows technically iwm is in downtrend 
and those of you who are following this weekly roundup regularly you remember that we started identifying the weakness in iwm around this time when we started having multiple yellow traffic light candles while other etfs were still bullish other etfs traffic light candle color was still green but iwm turned to yellow and then started to decline from there this is one etf that could not make new all time high though it recovered nicely from a low that was made on wednesday but it is in downtrend so we are not going to take any long trade in fact next week if it comes to the memory resistance line and tilts down from there then it may give us a low risk go with flow short trade opportunity you may keep an eye for that overall the etfs are bullish and the broad market indices are also bullish however when we go into sector analysis we don't see the same bullishness every week we analyze 11 sectors across three review periods the red bar represents performance of this week yellow bar performance of one week prior to red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to yellow bar together they represent four weeks or about one month of performance any bar coming to the right of the zero line represents growth in that sector and any bar coming to the left hand side represents decline in that sector the strength of the index and etfs are negated by six of the 11 sectors declining this week, showing that there is no broad participation in the market. The market's up move is fueled mostly by information technology, which has a very large gain, and that too probably by few large tech stocks in that sector. If you see at the sector performance graph, you will see that Telecom actually declined more than information technology went up. And many more sectors declined with greater percentage than the sectors that went up. The fact that market still went up is because of some IT companies, which are very large cap companies, went up significantly. Amazon is certainly one of them, went up by more than 10% in one day, but so did Apple, Facebook, etc. So the market went up because of that, but clearly there is no broad participation in terms of sector. In previous week's market roundup, we saw that consumer staples, energy, and real estate, these three were down. This week, three more have joined them, healthcare, industrial, and telecom. Healthcare, industrial, and telecom. All of them, healthcare, industrial, telecom, has significant decline. Consumer discretionary was weak for many months in the past. Now, for all the three review periods, it is going up. All the three bars, red, yellow, and blue, are to the right of the zero level. So for all three review periods, or for about one month, it is going up. So probably we had several catching the low by opportunities during this period and there may still be good buy opportunities there now telecom industrial healthcare these three sectors all of them had sharp reversals from previous weeks gains out of that telecom was already weak for a long time so probably there is no optimal short opportunity in telecom right now you may actually start looking for possible buy opportunities if the industry starts to go up.
it tried to go up for a while and there were some swing long trades profitable trades that one could take but it declined again this week this is earning session so when a few companies large companies declare earnings and earnings is poor that may drag down the entire industry or sector that might have happened in telecom AT&T declared earnings and the stock dropped after that that might have contributed to the drop in telecom anyway it was weak for a long time so we were not looking for short opportunities industrials and healthcare are different they were strong earlier as sectors and now they weakened so we may be cautious about stocks long positions that we may have we may protect any profit with trailing stock or even look for shorts we can see this transition clearly from strength to weakness from q drill let's have a quick look at that every time we open q drill it analyzes 11 economic sectors and about 170 industry groups the analysis is done across 12 monthly periods and then more frequently for recent periods 10 days 5 days 2 days and 1 day for each of the periods it assigns ranks one to the strongest performer and large number to the worst performer and also applies a heat map cyan to the best performer magenta to the worst performer from the sector heat map we can see that information technology was strong and it is still strong now ranking number one telecom was weak for long time in fact over two days and one days it gained rank slightly earlier it was rank 11 the worst possible rank now it gained slightly so we may start looking for long opportunity we will not buy them unless there is a valid q trade setup but may start looking at such subtle signals of the sector turning up now healthcare is one sector that was strong earlier cyan color and now turning magenta our key period to make trading decision is the five days period and we can see that healthcare is very weak over five days period and it was cyan earlier gradually turning magenta so you may start looking for short opportunities industrials was also stronger earlier more cyan and now weakening rank changing gradually you can see from four to five to six to seven and over one day period now rank is eight now these sectors are very broad so we may not just look at healthcare and say that it is weak and look for short opportunities in fact though the healthcare sector is down if we drill down using qh or q drill you may find buy opportunities in some healthcare industries so all these sectors are very broad to pinpoint trading opportunities we may do better if we look at sectors but also drill down into the actual industries and see which ones are going down some of the healthcare industries are actually going up and some are actually going down and if you use the drill down you could catch a very profitable beautiful q bounce long trade setup in esrx on 18th october that gave a very high profit let's see how we could use the drill down to identify esrx and take the trade right on 18th october when it gave us a valid Q trade setup. In sector analysis, we can sort the sectors over five days period. And we can see that healthcare is actually weak, ranking 10. 
but if we drill down by clicking this get industries button go to industry analysis now it will show only the industries belonging to healthcare sector let us sort again over the primary five day period and now you clearly see that several healthcare industries are actually cyan over five days, 10 days period. So those are bullish, whereas several are pretty magenta, that is bearish. Of higher interest are the industries which were magenta earlier and turning cyan, and healthcare services is one of them. It immediately catches our eye, gradually changing rank, improving significantly, in fact. And the pace of improvement is shown in the right side columns. So we can see pace over two days to one day is cyan. We can just look at the color coding and instantly see that this industry is improving rank and from this cyan color of pace, we see that the rank improvement pace is very high. So that caught my eye. You may do the same analysis using real time data every day, and you could drill down. Now it is going to Thomson Reuters icon or Zenith, Meta stock Zenith, getting all the stocks. It found 50 stocks. We can click the calculator button. It is retrieving data and doing the vital statistics calculation. What we are looking for in this case are bullish stocks because the industry was weak and starting to strengthen. For that, we look for stocks which are strong in terms of valuation, these two columns, blue color, or relatively strong growth that is green color across the growth columns and ESRX immediately catches the eye because it has the best possible relative value score of 100. In any case looking at the blue color would also be enough. So one could look at the ESRX chart and we can see how beautifully ESRX was going down, then came to the watermark support, broke below that, and immediately on the next candle, it went back up with a bull release signal in the weekly chart. So we could keep an eye on this stock because this was fundamentally strong in terms of valuation. It was in an industry that was weak for a long time, but strengthening. And then we saw that price was going down below the watermark support. So how I track that is in the weekly chart, I draw a horizontal line. at the level of the watermark support and then I can change the template to at a glance template. And we can see that on this candle, now on the daily chart, we had a bull release signal. We had very high activity and price closed just below the weekly watermark support level. It tried to go up, it has a very long upper candle, but close just below that. So we could keep an eye on the stock next day and on this green candle day using fine tune real time chart, we could take a long entry at the lower end of this candle. And after that, it went up nicely, giving very large profit. In this way, the false breakouts, either downside or upside breakouts, that happen either 
at deep watermark support resistance levels or sometimes at memory support resistance levels and those which are accompanied by extreme activity reversal. They often give us very low risk and high profit trade opportunities. The more we see these charts, the more prepared we'll be next time such an opportunity comes. So this turned out to be a very profitable long trade and we could identify it starting from Q drill. So we saw that healthcare as a sector may be down, but we sometimes need to go to individual industries and make trading decisions based on industry strength weakness and the stock's fundamental strength weakness and the technical charts. Sector in itself is too broad to make trading decisions, but it is something to keep in mind just as it is important to keep in mind the broad market strength that we study using broad market internals as well as broad market ETFs. If we look at industries with best performance over last five days, we see that the best performing industries are spread across diverse groups. Seven of them were strong for a long time. Last market roundup also, I mentioned the stocks that were strong and at or near pendulum high seems to be holding on to that price. This graph also shows similar picture. Seven of the best performing industries are actually strong for a long time. Only three were weak earlier and now strengthening. That is diversified metal and mining, footwear and marine. They were weak for a long time. So you may look for potential buy opportunities in these stocks. In footwear, Q Vital will show that Skechers has the best balance of valuation and growth. And it in fact broke out of weekly range in Q charts. Another interesting stock in footwear is Rocky Brands, RCKY. It has the very best valuation among the footwear stocks. Its growth was weak, but strengthening now, as you may see from vital growth statistics. Let's look at Q Vital, do a peer analysis on Skechers and see these two stocks using Q charts. In Q Vital, we can enter the root stock click on the get peers button. It is retrieving peer list. It has already obtained detail of the company. Once it has found the peer list, we can click the calculator button to do the vital statistics calculation and go to the vital tab. And instantly we can see Skechers has a nice balance. It's not overvalued not very low value also in medium range, whereas growth relative to others is best. We can see that from the green color. So that is a stock that may be of interest. And the other one is not able to find in this list. Let's find Rocky or see. also a footwear company. Why it didn't retrieve in the first time is because its average volume is about 27,000 shares. criteria <laughs> was to find stocks that has more than 100,000 shares traded per day. This is not heavily traded. In fact, if it is below our input criteria, the background is changed to red color so that we are alerted of this fact. However, if the BDASK spread is narrow enough, or maybe using limit price, you can take a long position 
such stocks, if fundamental, technical, industry strengths all are aligned, when such stocks go up, they go up suddenly and heavily. Let's do a calculation on vital statistics. Clicking the calculator button, retrieving the data, we can go to vital tab and we can see now. RCKY has the best possible valuation. Growth is not good, which is expected. We don't expect optimal valuation and strong growth at center. We, if we go to the growth tab, we can see that Rocky has poor growth. EPS growth, negative, strongly negative, magenta color. In all Q systems, magenta is worst. After that red, after that yellow, after that green, after that cyan. The same color coding is applied here. So just by looking at it, we know in terms of growth, Rocky was the worst one for EPS. At the same time, we see in recent quarters, quarter over quarter performance, it is actually cyan. So it is getting stronger. And the other one was Skechers. Skechers is one of the best performer in terms of growth. The only other one is Nike. That's why we saw that Skechers has a nice balance of valuation and growth. Rocky is optimally valued. Both of them nicely broke out of weekly charts. Let's look at Q charts. In the weekly backdrop chart, we see that initially Rocky decline made a very nice base. And remember in recent quarters, its earnings is improving. So at those times you could start to buy the stock as it was coming down to the swing lows on the weekly chart. You could catch it at very low price. So those would probably be kind of bounce or box long trade opportunities. The actual trades will be taken using daily chart. The price points could be identified by the nice base and the memory support line that was there in the weekly chart. We know that box and bounce are reversal trade setups. After that, a stock makes higher high and higher low and continues to go up. And that gives us go with flow long trade setup. So this week it had earnings. It had a strong gain in the earnings week, then price pulled back, made a higher low and gave us a cyan color candle again. So those could be points one could buy more or if they didn't buy earlier, they could start buying at this point. The actual entry decisions could be made on daily chart, allowing for more precise entry and narrower stop loss. This seems to have broken out nicely of the watermark resistance level in weekly, and the next watermark resistance is quite far away. This is in footwear industry. The industry is getting stronger, so one may be able to buy this stock, provided there is a low risk entry opportunity in the daily chart. Already some opportunities have passed, but some more opportunities may come. The other stock was Skechers. A very similar pattern to Rocky, it also declined, gave us two bullish headwind signals in the weekly chart, and after that practically it didn't go down. Created a nice base over many months, and every time it came down and gave a bull release signal, we could buy it. The actual buying decisions could be on daily chart, but this could be very low risk entry opportunities. This week it went up strongly. 
broke above the watermark resistance level. There is one resistance level here, but probably it will break that and the next one is forever. Now if Skechers comes down, maybe to this watermark resistance, which may act as support now, and tilts back up from there, it may give us a very low risk entry opportunity. These two are interesting stocks. They are interesting because they are well-known companies and they made nice base for long period of time. And we could get low risk entry opportunities along the way. The more we study such charts and can observe where using unambiguous checklist, we could enter a trade. The more confident we will be to take the trade in the next stock that comes to a setup similar to this. Headwind, bullish headwind that creates a false downside breakout or a bull release in a stock that goes up precisely from the low created by this earnings candle. The more we study, the more confident we will be to take the trade at this point. Not think at the right age though that we could have taken it. We will actually be able to take it. So I thought both of these are interesting to study from that angle. How stocks made very nice base over a long period of time before breaking out. Those could be long term investments as well as swing trades. Now this week, the best performing industry is of course internet and direct marketing retail because of Amazon. However, the very best performing industry's apparent strength is misleading. And we can see that from QDrill. Out of 21 stocks in that industry of more than one dollar price, only four increased for the week. 18 of them actually declined. That is somewhat surprising considering the fact that QQQ on NASDAQ had one of its best weeks ever in recent times. In such a strongly bullish move of QQQ, 18 stocks in the industry that is best performing declined and some of them declined heavily. In fact, two of the top stocks went up by about 12%. Amazon is one and there is another stock, whereas three bottom stocks went down by between 14 to 19%. So clearly, the drops are bigger than the gains. And these two stocks, EXPE and SFLY dropped heavily after giving very profitable box short trade setup. All textbook examples of box short trade setup. If earnings were nearby for these stocks, then it could be traded using short call vertical. Or if the put options were not very expensive, it could be traded with simple put. Because the stocks were at high level high price, probably the options were not that expensive. In any case, short call verticals could be easily taken. Let's do this study. We go to QDrill, find the best performing industry, then drill down and go into the actual performance of the individual stocks. And we'll see that most of them went down and several went down heavily. That is why I mentioned that though the broad market indices are very strong, broad market ETFs are also very strong, the sector's performance is not reflecting that. There is no broad participation. Many more sectors declined than gained. And even in industry, in the very best performing industry, many more stocks declined than gained. So the up move was fueled by some very large technology stocks, large market cap stocks that went up. Let's use QDrill and do this study. In 
industry analysis last time we were looking at only healthcare industries we can click the magnifying glass to refresh data get all the industries sort it over five days period and instantly we can see internet and direct marketing retail is the best performer it's ranking one now can click the get stocks button it has found number of stocks we click the calculator button to do the vital statistics calculation and from the percentage change we can see many of them actually more of them are down than up we can click the magnifying glass to get the data in vital analysis go to the performance panel sort it over five days when we sort it over five days performance we see two of the stocks overstock.com and amazon they increased by more than 12 percent if we scroll down we'll see many stocks went down heavily between 10 percent to 25 percent some of them are very low market cap but expedia is a relatively large company so is sfly and sfly and expedia both gave very profitable box short trades let's look at them in the daily chart we see that expedia tried to go above the watermark resistance level and on this yellow candle came back below it there was heavy activity earlier at the same price level that made all the conditions of box short trade setup on this yellow candle so a short could be taken we can see earnings was nearby so one could take a short call vertical or simple put trade and that turned out to be hugely profitable trade these are low risk trades we can identify because box and edwin trades are reversal trades as well as bounce trade all these are reversal but the lowest risk the fastest reversal trades will be in this order first bounce then box and then headwind and this turned out to be a very nice textbook example of box short trade. Same was true for SFLY. SFLY tried to go above the watermark level, came down, gave a bear release signal with very high activity. So it tried to go up with very high activity on two successive days and on third day it created a false upside breakout and came down with heavy activity at the same time it was coming down from a memory resistance line that gave us additional confidence to take the short trade. again if earnings was nearby one could take it using short call vertical or simple put also turned out to be very very profitable trade we could identify such box or bounce or headwind trade setups using Q sonar using the bottom up approach. So we have a list of stocks in our short list. We may run Q sonar every day on daily charts, daily daily candles. And if we have a trade setup, we may look them up on at a glance template, Q charts, and also look up their fundamentals using Q vital. By doing that, we could take these two trades, low risk and turned out to be very profitable. Back to our industry analysis. So there are other industries, other two other than footwear, that is marine transportation and diversified metal and mining, which were weak earlier and turning into strength now. I will not drill down into stocks. You may do that after the session. But just look at this. 
diversified metal mining was magenta earlier and now turning cyan rank is very strong now so there may be nice long opportunities here footwear was one that we already studied and made in transportation was weak earlier now clearly turning into strength the other industries as we saw out of the 10 top performers seven were already strong for a long time like semiconductor management healthcare software they are cyan all along here also healthcare supply system software cyan all along so the best time to take longer term long opportunities in them might have passed but swing long opportunities may still be there you may look for that when we look at the worst performing industries we see that out of 10 four are in healthcare and one is indirectly related to healthcare drug retail drug retail and four are in healthcare this was also reflected in the reversal of healthcare sector at the same time we saw we could take very profitable long trade in another healthcare industry the stock was express scripts so we can use the data in compartments some healthcare industries may be weak doesn't mean every everything is weak now these four healthcare industries healthcare technology healthcare distributor drug retail and healthcare facilities they are weak for many months now so the best time to short them might have passed the time to buy them may come once the industry start to turn around there is no such sign in q edge yet let's look at q edge or q drill in industry analysis we can sort it from worst ranking to best ranking and we can see there are many healthcare related industries healthcare tech healthcare distributor drug retail healthcare facilities and all of them are weak for many months so the best time to short them might have passed but we may look for low risk swing short opportunities because they are clearly bearish shown by magenta color over the primary five days period we are not going to look for long opportunities unless they start to turn up turning up will be shown by this kind of cyan color over one day period and also it will be shown by cyan color over the three pace columns none of the healthcare worst performers are showing that kind of signal of changing from magenta to cyan so we may wait for that household appliance this industry is the worst performer we discussed this industry earlier and we already identified whirlpool as a stock that was optimally valued maybe whirlpool dropped again after earnings but it is reaching support levels if it starts to go up it may give low risk buy opportunity but we'll try to buy such stocks only if the industry also starts to show some sign of strength let's drill down from household appliances and look at whirlpool and we look at its charts also among the worst performing industries we found household appliances the very worst performer worst rank we can drill down even before going to the vital tab we can see that over one day it changed color to cyan somewhat and further signs of strength are shown immediately and visually by the cyan color over the paste columns paste for five days to two days and Two days to one days you see if we just look at the performance column sometimes we miss the fact that they are actually starting to go up rapidly because they are starting from very low ranks it takes a while 
to realize that the industry is going up. The paste columns make it more prominent and probably we are able to recognize the turning off of such industry ahead of others. Probably the closest we can get to knowing what is going to happen next week or next next week. So even before going into the stocks, my attention is caught by the cyan color over one day period performance, but more so by the cyan color over the two base columns, five day to two day and two day to one day. We can go to the actual stocks. It has found multiple stocks. Whirlpool is one of them. We can click the calculator to do the vital statistics calculation. Retrieving data is done the calculation. Instantly we can see Whirlpool has the best possible score in valuation. Growth is mixed because the number of stocks in this list is limited. We have to be cautious about using the heat map of the growth columns. Because if it is only two or three, one of them will be green, one of them will be red, one of them will be yellow. We can go to the growth tab. We can click the magnifying glass to get the data in vital analysis. Let's go to the growth panel. And we can see Whirlpool is having better growth than others. It's not very bad, green color. Remember the color coding, cyan is best than green. So in terms of EPS growth, Whirlpool is not bad. It's more important to look at the yearly growth. The quarter over quarter growth may fluctuate a lot. So we can see over the more important yearly periods, the EPS growth is quite strong. If we look at the stock chart of Whirlpool, we see that it has dropped. And it has gone below the watermark support level with extreme high activity even in the weekly chart. Probably it was because of earnings or some other big news. If it goes back up above this memory support line, or maybe this memory support level, then it will complete a false downside breakout with heavy activity, and that will give us a very low risk entry opportunity in a stock that is optimally valued at present. And if we are tracking this using Q drill, we see that industry is showing some sign of strength in terms of the pace columns, that is acceleration, then stock dropped. That may actually be good for us, have a very low risk entry opportunity. So we may keep an eye on Whirlpool for that. Every week we also look at the industries with best and worst rank improvements. Often they end up being the best or worst performer in subsequent weeks. When we study industries with ranked improvement, we see four of the major rank improvements happened in consumer discretionary sector. And from the same Q edge, you can see sector, this sector, consumer discretionary, was weak for a long time. And it is turning up now. That is shown further by these industries, hotel, resource and cruise lines, laser facilities, houseware, specialties, home improvement, retail. They were weak and now strengthening. Three are in fact in energy. We saw that oil also went up. It gave us a low risk go with flow long trade opportunity. Several oil industries were languishing. The energy sector is still weak, but some of them has very strong rank improvement, you can see, huge rank improvement, oil and gas drilling. Same in oil and gas equipment and services. And energy equipment and services. The base rank improvement is here, oil and gas drilling. You may look for potential 
by the low opportunities in this. Actually, this term pioneer energy pes.n is optimally valued has interesting q charts fundamentals may not be the best there is earnings nearby these are good times to take a short put vertical if there is a valid trade setup let's look at pioneer energy starting from q drill whenever we restart our analysis from a particular angle we can always click the magnifying glass so every data is refreshed now we are going to look for best rank improving industries that is the best pace industries going up smallest to largest we sort by that on the pace 10 days to 5 days column and we can see oil and gas drilling is the best rank improver Rank improved heavily from 155 to 54 and then further to 26. Click on the stocks button. It's retrieving the stocks. Multiple stocks are found. We can do the vital statistics calculation by clicking the calculator button. We can see PES. It's actually optimally valued. Growth is not good that is expected we don't expect optimal valuation and good growth at the same time earnings is nearby remember if earnings is nearby the eps debt is shown with red background so that caught my eye pes isn't it interesting the q charts show the possible go with flow or bounce or hit a long trade instantly we see that it dropped heavily, went up with a bull release signal in the weekly chart, came down to the same price level, went up again with a bull release signal. Now for the third time, it has come to the exact same price level, memory support level. We already have two successive weekly candles with long lower tail, showing that price is not able to go down. There is a memory resistance also, but looking at the nice base in weekly and the fact that this industry is biggest rank improver, I will say that it is more likely that it will break the memory resistance. Nothing is certain, but it is more likely. In the daily chart, we see that price came to the exact same watermark support level near the right edge gave a full release signal but the candle had upper tail lower tail also mixed candle then gave a bull release signal again with bullish headwind so we have multiple bullish signals in the daily chart it gave a valid headwind long trade setup on this candle because the weekly candle shape was bullish though the color was magenta shape was bullish that allows us to take a headwind long trade stock would be just below recent low so around this level entry will be closing of this candle price has not gone down or up from there and we could book at least partial profit at the memory resistance level so this is one stock you may keep an eye on it already gave a valid long trade setup and price is still at the same level among the discretionary sector industries that has very good rank improvement laser facilities is one i saw this stock sees sees it is at nice support just like we saw in case of Pioneer Energy. It also has high short squeeze score. So if it goes up, short covering will further fill the rally. Let's look at its fundamentals. Not sure whether fundamentals are good. Let's see if vital for that. We can enter the root stock, get his peers, retrieving the data. You can click the calculator button to get the vital statistics 
and we can see it is actually the best valued stock in this small list not blue color but not magenta color also in terms of valuation and has short squeeze potential it dropped heavily in the weekly chart came to the watermark support level and reversed from there on this candle and now coming to that same level again in the daily chart we see the same watermark support level one here one here so if it turns back up from here or even better if it goes below the second watermark support reverses from there then we may have a very low risk entry opportunity again in an industry that was weak for a long time and just showing some rank improvement laser facilities was weak for a long time and has rapid rank improvement we can see that from the base color hotels is another industry that gained in rank however many hotels are near 52 week high in fact we may look for shorts now of course the industry also has to show some sign of weakness let's look at the chart hlt hilton Scarily in uptrend over a longer period, went above the watermark resistance in weekly, and now has a very indecisive candle in the weekly chart. This was the earnings week that is accompanied by an indecisive candle. If it comes below the watermark resistance, it will create a false upside breakout. In daily, there was a bearish headwind signal at earnings. It broke above it. And on Friday, when the market rallied heavily, this stock actually declined. There is a memory support line. Friday's candle shape is very bearish. And this pattern that at earnings it tries to shoot up. Immediate next candle, it reverses with a bearish shape candle that is long upper tail is not very good sign for a stock. It is still in uptrend. If it breaks below the memory support line, we may have a very low risk short entry opportunity. And if options are available, narrow spread options, we may take very low risk short trade using put options. At this high price of the stock, the options will be very low price. So we can make good use of that. When we look at industries with rank decline, we see Harley Davidson, many people's favorite company. It has a big rank decline. Remember, HOG had a very profitable box long trade setup. This industry was weak for a long time. Then it gave a very profitable box long trade setup, went up from there, and now the rank declined. These are actually times when it may give a swing low and the go with flow, the first go with flow trade opportunity that may come. Let's look at the industry and also the stock. For looking at the biggest rank decliners, we can sort over the pace column 10 day to 5 day, largest to smallest, and we can see motorcycle manufacture. It was weak for a long time. Then it strengthened over this period. That is when we had a profitable swing box long trade setup. Now it has declined. If now the industry starts to turn cyan again, then we may have a go with flow long trade setup on Q charts. In HOG weekly chart, we see that this watermark support is holding nicely many times it tried to go below that but failed we had a very profitable box long trade setup that we discussed around these candles we discussed in one of the market roundups then it went up strongly if earnings was nearby we could trade it using short put verticals very profitable now it has come down 
come down to value area and see the weekly candle backdrop color is still bullish so if it tilts back up and we may get a better view by removing the watermark levels that is applying the simple hop on template we can now see that if it goes up from here and the daily candle color turns cyan it may give us a go with flow long trade opportunity of course some memory resistance lines are there so if we have a cyan color candle which is closing very close to the memory resistance lines then we are not going to take a long trade at that point we are going to wait for price to break out of that come down and till back up again and keep an eye on this stock steel is another such industry several steel stocks are in actual uptrend that is higher high higher low now there is a rank decline of the industry so if the industry improves next week then these two stocks cmc and aks may give valid long trade setups cmc commercial metals is optimally valued it may give a bounce long trade setup and ak steel may give a go with flow long trade setup let's look at their charts cmc and aks cmc has given a valid bounce long trade setup on friday's close it was a sudden large drop accompanied by extreme and very high activities and then a price close above previous days close price supported by memory support line for bounce long trade setup we don't have any requirement on weekly chart so we have a valid bounce long trade setup and as price dropped heavily in cmc the options if there are options will be very highly priced so it is very lucrative to take such long trades using short put verticals even if the price stays at same level we'll have large profit because options volatility will reduce and if it goes up certainly we will make good profit those are very low risk high profit trade opportunities this bound signal came on friday in fact if you were watching using q sonar you could take it on Friday. AK still is going up with higher high and higher low. So it is in uptrend. We have weekly backdrop candle color cyan. It has come down to value area. So next week, if it goes up, then we will have a valid go with flow long trade opportunity. And we like to have some sign of the industry strengthening. Either the steel industry performance column one day two days turning cyan or at least the base columns turning cyan stocks in it consulting and other services many of them are near pendulum high and this has one of the biggest rank decline so you may keep an eye for possible short opportunities they will be very profitable if we can have put options narrow bid as trade put option caci may give a box short signal with false upside breakout let's look at that we can see in the weekly chart caci is not able to go above this watermark resistance level this week it tried to go up but came down close just above the watermark resistance level in the daily chart we see multiple watermark levels and also a memory support if price goes below the memory support level gives us a bear release signal then it will give us a box short trade setup we already have exertion at similar price level earlier so those sellers may still be willing to sell some more so that will be a low risk box short trade setup several other stocks are interesting recently i sent a mail to some of my friends cvs is of course weak but i sent not on cvs cvx 
Shepra. Recently, I sent our Q at a glance chart to few traders when price was at this level. We had the bearish headwind signal, price was around this level, and I sent the chart to them saying that it is interesting. I took a put option on CVX at that time because earnings was nearby. I was not going to short with stock. And on Friday, they closed with more than 100% profit. One last stock chart I like to share. I don't remember how I came across that. Let's look it up in Q Vital first. I think I found it from bottom up approach from Q Sonar, which is NetApp. It came in my sonar two or three days ago. Let's do the vital statistics calculation and see NetApp. It's very close to 52 week high, 2.72% below 52 week high. However, growth is clearly weak negative over many periods. We can go to the growth tab. We can see that revenue growth is negative for all the five yearly periods, one year to five year. Earnings growth was small, last one year it is strong. I think earnings is nearby. Okay? Earnings is nearby, 15th November still has more than two weeks left that's why it is not colored with red background but it caught my eye because it came in q sonar and remember this setup we keep on seeing multiple times either in a stock that is creating a base at pendulum low or in a stock that is at very high level here we had a bearish headwind in the weekly chart that led to a nice price drop. Price tried to go above that, created a false upside breakout, drop again. Now for the third time, price has come to the same level. We already have a bear release signal in the weekly chart. Candle color is yellow, neutral. And from relative performance in weekly chart, we see that it is underperforming the market. And see on Friday, QQQ went up strongly. This is a tech stock, but it dropped. Not a good sign for the stock. In the daily chart, I see that it came to the watermark level, precisely reverse from there. We had the bear release signal on this candle. That was a box short trade setup. That is when it came in Q sonar. Next day, it tried to go up on Thursday, Friday, while the market rallied, it actually went up. So it looks like a stock that is more likely to go down, at least enough to give us a profitable swing short trade. So if somebody shorted it on the first magenta candle or maybe on Friday, they may book some profit at the ascending yellow direction line. Stop would be just above recent high. So this stock I found using bottom up approach using Q Sonar. And many stocks we saw we could find using top down approach using Q Drill. There are plenty such opportunities. You may study Q Drill to find more such opportunities. Probably there are more trades than one could take. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thanks to all of you again for attending. I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.